Welcome back to Tabletop 24. Welcome back to the UKGE show floor. I'm here with Ed from Hi. By The Same Token. So Ed's one of the designers for the company. Um, obviously, we've featured you on a couple of the streams that we've done for Fashion Bird, but that's not all that By The Same no, Token does. No, not at all. So tell us a little bit about the lines that we've got here. So there's, there's, we, we kind of cover a ton of stuff, but really our main, our main kind of interest for a very long time has been living card games. Yeah. So our most popular range is uh, Marvel Champions, probably followed by things like Arkham Horror and most recently Star Wars Unlimited. Um, one thing that's marking this event is this is one of our first forays into our system agnostic range, for yep. example. So we're trying to break away and do something a little bit more kind of, not a new way to express ourselves, I suppose I'd say, a little bit more control over the sort of media we get to produce. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're kind of covering everything. Yeah, so obviously we've seen everything that's got this coming out. Obviously, one of the things is these lines are ever evolving, aren't they, yeah, as absolutely. well? So yeah. when you look at the living card games, there's always new things that are coming around. Um, obviously, from the design perspective, tell us, like, what's... So let's say, for instance, Arkham Horror released a new token tomorrow. What's your design brief on that? Immediately, I probably get on Audible and listen to, like, half of the Lovecraft collection again. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm one of these people that I, I really, to work on something, I have to get very, very immersed in it. And so I think hopefully you'll find there's a lot of myself in a lot of these drawings. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I kind of go from there. I try and look at period-specific stuff. Arkham's always got a lot of art deco in it. It's yeah. got a lot of these kind of very specific 1920s styles of illustration. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's the same for a lot of stuff. Dune is a range I adore because it's just a lot of reference points from the media without, and especially it's a piece of media that doesn't have a lot of visual representations. So you have a lot of places to go and play with. Yep. Um, a lot of like at new radiation, like hostile architecture, for example, is like a really cool point to do from tokens. I know that sounds really random, but yeah. you can take it to those places because there's not a lot of other stuff to reference. Yeah, so we know obviously that a lot of that artwork that does come through, we've seen that. Um, so when we cover the flesh and blood stuff that we've done, and they're the ones that we're really familiar with. Yeah. Obviously yeah. we sit players down, they go, these are cool, these work really well, they're thematic. Obviously you have to stay a little bit separate from the IP itself because yeah, yeah. of the, the, the infringement on there, but the, the tokens, they do what they say. They, they're a really good high quality product. Um, pretty much everybody, every token's acrylic. Yeah. Uh, talk us for a little bit through, if you can, the production. So the production is all done in-house. So um, we've got a studio based in Hove, and uh, we'll have a um, team, well, I say a team of designers. There's myself and another illustrator who will work through, um, work through the design process, and then it's all laser cut and painted using a very secret technique uh, by a lovely man over there. Um, and then uh, it'll all be cut and sent out from in-house, essentially. Uh, we have a few built products as well, so a lot of us are, a lot of us are um, model makers or come from a model making background. So uh, we'll be involved in the kind of development and building of that as well. And there's a lot of precision and love that goes into that because we're all very familiar with that industry. And you can tell like that by the type of tokens that you produce. You don't just produce a token for the sake of producing a token. It's got relevance, it's got, yeah. it's got facts. It may replace a cardboard version, but some of the stuff that you've gone above and beyond on that, uh, it's, yeah. it, it has a fit, uh, place in the, in the game itself, doesn't it? A lot of the time we're trying to improve. Like, like that's, that's, always, that's always the thing I try to look at when I'm making something, is not really can I just make a solid acrylic version of this, it's like, how do I make this slightly easier? Where it's things like double-sided tokens, multiple denominations, it's like, well, I can just flip something over, does this speed the game up, does this make me more comfortable? Yeah. Like, how can I focus on the very cool game happening in front of me and not moving a bunch of stuff around, yeah. while still making it look awesome? Yeah. yeah, so I mean, we're a little bit biased on the We think the stuff that you guys put out <laughs> is really good. Uh, when we very first the Lorcana set with the, the glitter sort of acrylic, that was absolutely lovely. Um, so if there's a game out there that you're interested in, LCG, TCG, board game, like I said, we're biased on this, so we get that. <laughs> um, we cannot recommend this enough if you want that upgraded extra component. So check out the links in the description below. So we'll link obviously to the website. Um, and thank you again, Ed. Thank you. And we'll catch you next time. Take care. Cheers.